Hello everyone, it's ASMR. Taking you on an adventure to the deep blue depths of Haggadah, Egypt. And today we set our scene in Poseidon's Reef. To start, I'd like you to take a few deep breaths and begin to relax and release any tension that you have built up over the course of your day. So, take a deep breath in, and out, relaxing your face muscles, and start to give yourself to this moment that you have carved out for yourself. Another deep breath in. And out. Just to the left you can see the hull of the ship where we spent a week steaming around the North Red Sea. And to the right you can see the Poseidon's Reef and how it stretches up to the surface of the water. You can think of coral reefs as like the underwater equivalent of a jungle, home to hundreds and thousands of different species. How beautiful it is catches the light. So this is the first of, I think, 24 scuba dives that we went on. And I have to say, I was super impressed. And I want you to imagine yourself weightless in the warm water with the sun shining down upon your back. Your BCD, which is your special vest known as a buoyancy control device, is perfectly weighted so you feel like you don't weigh anything and are perfectly floating in the water. Here we have my buddies swimming with me, embarking on this beautiful adventure that we get to take together. One thing that I love about scuba diving is that it is a very meditative and calming process. Learn to control your breath and your heart rate, slowing it all down so that you remain calm, cool, and collected so that you learn how to sip your oxygen. And when you sip, you use a lot less of it, and so you can spend more time down in the water. So, for this dive, we were given a limit of uh, 50-ish minutes which is, you know, a pretty standard dive. Uh, but there's just so much to see.
easily have spent over an hour just exploring beautiful scene that we're at. There you can see a couple of blue-cheeked butterfly fish. I believe that's an uh, angel fish. But don't <laughs> Not sure if you could hear that, but it was the excited squeals of one of my buddies. And here we have a nudibranch. I like to think of nudibranchs as the jelly beans of the sea. They come in all sorts of beautiful, bright colours. They're kind of like a sea slug. Some beautiful corals climbing up towards the sky. And as you can see, the fish here are very calm and don't feel like we are a, a threat. Got a little school of blue-cheeked butterfly fish hanging out as a group. You'll usually find them as a, at least a pair or a little school. Rarely do they like to be alone and they like to hang out in coral, dense areas. Off to our left, we caught a glimpse of a parrotfish. Let me know if any of you are scuba divers and what beautiful parts of the world you've gotten to go dive. Hello blue oyster. You can see it by its uh, ultraviolet blue. Uh, I guess you'd call it a lip. Mm, the lovely coral fanning out. the right you can see a parrotfish taking some nibbles on the reef. They're called parrotfish, one for their beautiful bright colours, the shape of their fins, and also that they have a beak which they use to bite off pieces of uh, coral. And Afterwards they excrete soft white sand. Looks like my buddy saw something interesting and is making way for us to go see him, whatever it may be. But you know, You may go diving as a group, but you'll never have the same dive because something that may be there may be gone in an instant by the time you get there. And so a highlight of someone's dive may have not even been seen by another. And you know, that's kind of like a metaphor for life. Is we're all in this together, but we have different experiences that shape us. And we're exploring the sandy bottom, looking for any 
anything that may be of interest. scuba diving you don't need to go fast and usually the slower you go the more you will see there are lots of beautiful species which are use camouflage or are expert hiders over the week I got much better at being able to see where species are and knowing where they like to hide. One thing that I hope you'll get to see in later videos is all the beautiful shrimp that hide in the water. One thing that is interesting about diving is light refraction. If you've ever seen a beam of light be shone through a prism and how it breaks it up into the color spectrum, a rainbow, the same thing actually occurs in the water. So you've got the sun coming down, shining through. And as you go deeper, you lose parts of the color spectrum, starting with the shortest wavelengths, such as red. And I think that happens around, I want to say, 20 feet but it all depends on a variety of factors. But you know, there's a ton of life within the first 20 feet. And often if you go too deep, you kind of go beyond the parameters for creation of life, and you don't end up seeing too much. Usually I limit my depths to around a hundred feet because after that you start to consume your oxygen pretty quickly because it gets compressed under all those atmospheres and then also you get a little bit chilly sometimes. Ah, uh, there you can see because I angled the camera down we lost some of the spectrum. Anyway, one thing I loved about diving in Egypt was how clear the water was. The visibility was utterly fantastic. And you could see so, so far. Often where I scuba dive, where I live, the visibility is, you know, on like a good day, 50 feet. But here we were getting well over 100, which is amazing. One of the many benefits that coral reefs have is that it uh, protects area from the uh, the waves and the currents and so if you get on the correct side of the reef you have very calm water like we have now we were in the northern part of the Red Sea which is an absolutely magical place of the world. 
you have the, the rocky deserts, tall hills, mountains of the Sinai, and then cascades into the ocean, under which is rich and bountiful from the nutrient and mineral rich sands being blown off from the desert into the sea. The corals, as you can see, are very beautiful, are also very resistant. The Red Sea has been able to withstand against coral bleaching events better than other parts of the world. Oh, look at that beautiful coral. Just folds upon folds. I really like that. Really stands out. Hmm. Did my dive buddy find something interesting? Or maybe they're just happy to be here. Hmm. There's a little parrotfish having a nibble. So, I actually started scuba diving in the Red Sea in Egypt back in 2016. I got my open water certification. And then after which I didn't dive for a couple of years until I went back to Egypt in the Red Sea, and I got my advanced open water. Hello, Mr. Parrotfish. And then, it was about a year when I was living in the Netherlands that I didn't die. And when the pandemic occurred, We were uh, you know, stuck inside and there wasn't many activities you could go out and do. Many activities that you could go out and do. And so on Facebook Marketplace, I found a set of gear for a nice price and picked it up and then started diving regularly, and I have to say, that was one of the best choices I have made, and I would say been pivotal in my life's path. I'm so happy with how lucky I am to be able to experience things like this, to be a passerby and a traveller in a world that is not my own, but that I get to appreciate. I would equate it to going on a walk in a forest, and getting to be immersed by nature, leaving no trace, not interacting with any of the animals, just respecting the fact that I am a visitor in their home. And so while it looks like we get close to the reefs, we are always very conscious to make sure that we don't touch them so that 
they don't uh, break because they can be quite fragile. And also, some of them can be a bit poisonous. So if not touching them wasn't reason enough, there you go. <laughs> and you can see here just how far you can see. You can see my buddy swimming ahead. So excited to be here. Just taking our time, gracefully moving through the water column, soaking up everything that there is. things that I need to buy is a fish identification book so that I can tell you all about the species that we're seeing. And there my dive buddy tells me to add a little bit more air into my BCD. Maybe because my buoyancy wasn't looking the best. I mean, I felt it was pretty good, but I'll always take constructive criticism and listen to advice. To be honest, it doesn't sound like I took the advice, though. <laughs> but you can always listen to it. So, at this point, we've turned the dive around. We're heading back to the ship. And we're kind of half on, half off, like around midway up the reef, and just enjoying the dynamics of such a diverse and interesting ocean playground. You can see how calm the fish are and they don't see us as threats. It's because we're moving in a relaxed, non-predatory fashion. Just enjoying that there is to see. Looking down, looking around. Not sure what I'm trying to look at at that point, but as it goes. It's uh, interesting getting to watch this dive again and bring back memories. And I'm actually seeing things that I missed on the dive before, which is uh, it's cool for me and just reminds me to always take your time and to just enjoy the moment and be present, to not be wrapped up in thought. And if the thoughts do come, don't fight them, just acknowledge them, see them, 
but don't engage with them. And then just let them pass by, like a little fish, swimming on. There are so many different types of corals here. I am so impressed by the biodiversity. Let's just take a couple of minutes to just relax and bring our minds back to this present moment, knowing that you are doing a good job taking time for yourself and appreciating yourself with self-care. Allowing yourself this moment to let go of any pressing thoughts. There we have my buddy trying to show me something using their flashlight. I don't really see what they're trying to show me. Yeah, no, I don't know. I find that I naturally look for uh, things that are more blue. Everyone has a, a preference of things that they look for. And in my group, one of the biggest things that we uh, get excited about is the nudibranchs that I mentioned earlier. I remember swimming back to the ship and just thinking about how excited and grateful I was to be there. The little emperor butterfly fish and some more blue cheeks hiding under the coral like a parasol in the rain. Excited to share more videos with you as I keep producing and trying to improve my my craft and my videography. It's definitely been a learning curve. Some days I feel like I'm beginning to get it and then other days, <laughs> a little less so. For example, sometimes I even forget to put in the right recording equipment. Hello, Pika. 
Picasso fish. I love the Picasso fish for their striking colours and markings of design. It kind of seems like it's almost painted. Makes me think of the quote, life imitates art. But in reality, it's probably the opposite. It's most definitely the opposite. <laughs> Just keep your mind clear. Everything go. Imagine yourself in the water, feeling warm and cozy, like you're wrapped up in a blanket, covering your entire body. And if you're feeling sleepy, give yourself permission to close your eyes and drift off to sleep. Hello, sea cucumber. How are you doing? Sea cucumbers are a delicacy in certain parts of the world. Oh, wow. That red ribbon-looking thing was nudibranch eggs. Clearly I missed it on the dive. But the, the red ribbon eggs are from a special type of nudibranch called the Spanish Dancer. And it gets that name from being a, a vibrant red and having frills, so when it undulates through the water as it swims, it looks like a flamenco dancer. Unfortunately, I didn't see any during my week of diving, but I saw a lot of their eggs, and my buddies saw the Spanish dancers, so I'm happy for them. And hopefully I'll see them next time. My next diving trip that I have planned is going to Honduras, which I am super, super excited for. Because I hear that's got some of the world's best diving. Hello, buddy. In my living room, I have a big world map of all the beautiful, world-renowned scuba diving sites to go to, and I want to see as many as possible. Hey buddy, what are you up to? Scuba diving always reminds me that I have the choice to spend my time in a way that is high quality and that I can make the effort to make sure that I put myself in the best possible situations in life available to me. And that, as part of self-care, I owe it to myself. There you go. A little 
group of uh, blue-cheeked butterfly fish. Wow. It's so calm. So graceful. really is amazing how relaxing and relaxed these fish are. Where I usually dive, there's a lot of lobster, and they're always trying to take your finger off. Just looking up the reef, you can see the how calm the water is above us. We had amazing weather while we were there. Obviously, Egypt doesn't rain, but it can be windy. But I can't think of really any time in which the weather was bad. My buddy has uh, seemingly found something. I wonder what it could be. I'm just going to go over. Ah, you can hear the excited squeals. So it's probably a nudibranch. And there's one right there. Hey, little buddy. Look how cool that is. How defined the lines and the colours are. Just hanging out. Living its best life. So, I'm just giving my friends some space so they can also bask and enjoy in the discovery. And so now I get to take a peek. Ah, uh, yes. It is a pajama nudibranch. Hey buddy, you can see the little rhinovores that kind of look like a little antenna on top of it, which it uses as a sensory, and it gets its name of being a pajama nudibranch due to the black and white stripes on it, looking like a set of old-timey pajamas. Like bananas in pajamas. Here, my buddy seems to have found something interesting and recorded it with their wrist GoPro. I wonder what it could be. Well. Yeah, I couldn't find it, and I was getting a little bit close to the reef. So instead of risking it, I just, just move on. Which is quite alright. And there, you have a peacock grouper. Hey buddy, look at all those spots in the green. Reminding you of a peacock feather. Now, 
beginning to get towards the end of our dive. Just wanted to take a moment and say thank you all so much for being so encouraging and supportive and embarking on this adventure with me. I'd say one of the my favourite things about being on YouTube is getting to interact with all of you. Getting to learn about what you think is interesting and what you care about. And also getting to share what I care about. So, thank you. And you know, if you've enjoyed this video and the content I create, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I've also now set up a Patreon, and if you think that my content's worth supporting, you can head on over. And thank you. Hello, Parrotfish. Nibble. Wow, you can see the beautiful bright colours in its beak. An interesting fact about parrotfish is that when they sleep, they hide in the reef and create a mucus membrane which disguises their smell. So, predatory fish can't find them, which is really cool. But they wake up, and they move, they only produce one of these uh, membranes at night, and so they are at risk after it. So in later videos, if I'm doing a night dive and I accidentally shine my light on one directly, I, I quickly move it away, just to let them sleep, because we all deserve a good night's sleep, isn't that right? Hmm. This year actually marks the ninth year, I think, that I've been listening to ASMR and using it to help me sleep. So a big thank you to all the content and creators over the years that have helped me go through university and life. Couldn't have done it without you. Mm. So, if you have time, let me know what you thought of this. And if there's anything that you really want me to monopolize on, like doing a guided meditation or maybe doing like a little bit of a biology lesson. Always happy for feedback and getting to have a little chat. So now, at this point, we're is coming to the end by the ship and just waiting to make sure the whole gang is there and soaking in the the last few moments of this beautiful scene until we get to go on our next dive can see another group of divers on their way to experience this beautiful part of the world. Just watching all the fish. And so now my buddy is giving me the signal 
that they're going to uh, send up our uh, our flotation, which you can think of as like a a pylon, letting people on the surface know where we are, so that boats can avoid this area, so we can safely ascend. And that's one thing I also really like about scuba diving is safety is a massive part of it. And that preparation and using common sense goes a long way and makes it all a more enjoyable experience. So now, using our backup regulator, we're going to start filling it full of air. And then we let it go, shooting it to the surface. And then we'll make our ascent. Once again, thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a lovely night. Or if you're going about your day still, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Until next time.